It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day in the neighbor. Won't you be mine? Won't you be mine? This podcast is going to be amazing, talking about two different stars, a different time for child shows like these. Child shows like these. Let me bring in my co host now. How are you today? Shall I good? Oh, lovely. Yeah, I've said to Belle Belle, she comes in here, she's got to be a good girl. She can be a little madam at times. So anyway, we better get this podcast going. So, uh, Belle Belle and Mike, it's time to fly. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Between the Pond. I am your host, Mike. Along with me is my everlasting co-host, Steph Felton. Hello, little peeps. Uh, fellow mixers, this episode is going to be all about two childhood uh, figures in our life that have made a impact on children's television in some shape or form mm. and this is a grand episode and it's a little bit different than the previous two because uh this time around we're not switching countries with the, the shows we're actually going to talk about our respective shows uh and just talking about them with her being british me being american so uh, but yeah, if you haven't noticed by the title of this episode, and of course the cool open, we are talking about uh, Mr. Rogers and Auntie Mabel. We are indeed. This is Mr. Rogers and Mr. Rogers versus Auntie Mabel. Yes. Yeah, so uh, uh, it's going to be done in a very grown-up, peaceful way because I'm sure Mr. Rogers and Auntie Mabel wouldn't want us to fight over. So. Consider this a friendly debate. Indeed. Um, this has been a long time coming because we were planning this for a while. And I thought it would take a long time to research. She has showed me a lot of Auntie Mabel as examples of the show. And uh, I've seen a, I've seen so much more of that more than uh, potentially my... Mr. Rogers uh, show. I've seen like a few episodes and I get, and I remember watching Mr. Rogers at a young age growing up and actually, you know, understanding what the format of the show is and how he does uh, his show and how, how he was like, I've yet to see other materials. There's like a few specials I missed out on and a documentary that came out last year. I need to go see it, but I'm here to talk about Mr. Rogers and um, based upon memories and just a little bit of research on hand. Yep, and uh, I did see a little bit of Mr. Rogers with um, with Mike. It's quite nice that we got to discover some Mr. Rogers together, you know. But um, for me, I very much grew up with with Auntie Mabel, and actually, when like discovering about Mr. Rogers and things like that, like the way what it happened was is that I had heard about this and thought oh this is America's answer to Auntie Mabel and come outside so basically the two programs they had was Mr. Rogers Neighborhood and come outside and of course both were very different so like Mr. Rogers was um, pretty much talking about um, the subjects were very much like current affairs and social issues that people may encounter. So, like, for instance, me and Mike watched the episodes on divorce and they had ones on gun violence and things like that and certain other issues. 
whereas come outside was things like discovering the world around you so there was episodes on like how bread was made like how you make bread how do you make teapots and like clay that sort of thing like was um what's it like to go travel on a bus or how does sending a letter work and things like that so it was like discovering the world around you you know and things like that now the thing is is that what she focuses on as a main focus in the show in mr rogers it's just kind of like a segment of the show as well because he'll do the same things where he'll like take you through a factory somewhere show you a show you a uh show you behind the scenes of something or show you people doing stuff in their field you just explore like certain topics you know if it's like music they he went to explore a music class or an orchestra and they'll show you he'll show you bits and bobs of everything going on behind the scenes like there was even i think that's a different show i'm thinking about mike don't do that okay because <laughs> i was th- i was thinking of a different show um i could be wrong but i think there was a few episodes where he went behind the scenes of a certain show but i think i'm thinking of reading rainbow as well so sometimes these pbs shows kind of meld in my head too so i'm just saying that out loud um Mm. but yeah it's like yeah he'll focus on deeper topics that kids will uh deeper topics to let kids understand a little bit more because sometimes parents have a hard time talking about these topics with Mm. uh kids and he'll try to uh talk about it and of course He'll bring in the, the land and make believe along with it and try to give you scenarios and show examples of it with, with puppets, um, with King Friday and all those people, even Daniel Tiger would be in there, a bunch of colorful characters in general, just to, just to show you what it's like and what they're going through. And he'll he'll kind of ask for feedback and like kind of like interact with you as you're watching the screen. You know, it's like what is this? And he'll have something in his hand, and it's like. Um, it's very educational that way. It's more catered to the child itself. Yeah. And also would like come outside. It was, that was very much an educational program. Cause like you weren't able to go out and buy the VHSs of it. It was very much only, the only time you had it on VHS is only like in school. Like I very much remember like watching come outside in school and that kind of thing. And they used to show it on like, uh, children's BBC and of course CBBS because it was aimed for younger kids and that kind of thing. <clears throat> and often, like uh, with our, it would like come outside. You know, often depending what the subject was, you like sometimes Auntie Mabel will stop what she's doing in her day to sit down and tell you a story about something. Like um, one good example is that on the episode of Marmalade. Um, when Pippin the dog um, had a, a tummy upset, so she got so she went to Spain, got some marmalade, and brought it back for Pippin to have. And she was talking about a story of um, Mary, um, who I think it was Queen of Scots or something, where basically she was travelling from France back to Scotland for where she was going to become queen and she be- and she became seasick so they gave her some marmalade to help with her her nausea and things like that and sometimes auntie Mabel if it's related on that will sing you a nursery rhyme and things like that you know like um, in the episode about rain she falls over and she sat there laughing her head off drenched and she get- and she recites the um, nursery rhyme and then there's a bit of animation put in there um where she tells you the the nursery rhyme of uh, dr foster i don't know if some people in uh, america may know it but it goes like this dr foster went to gloucester in a shower of rain he stepped in a puddle right up to his middle and never went there again so often with that, she would like sing you songs, like nursery rhymes, or tell you, she'll sit down and tell you a story. But often there was a song that was 
based on the subject. So there was like a song on spiders, song on bread, rain, uh, letters, things like that. So it was done in fun ways. And of course, you know, the biggest star of all, like Auntie Mabel was one of the big stars, but as a child, you always look forward to seeing one person and come outside and that was Pippin the dog like pretty much she was this mischievous little dog but she was you know she was good as a good dog as well things like that and um, you know often sometimes Auntie Mabel may have a bit of a, a tiff with Pippin and tell her off but you know she was a fun little dog and would go on these adventures with Auntie Mabel and things like that and um you know, when thinking about the comparisons between Mr. Rogers and Auntie Mabel, of course, there's major differences because, like, Auntie Mabel had a dog. And what's another thing that may sort of bunk the points up for Auntie Mabel, as well as having a dog? Oh, yeah. She had her own aeroplane. She had a white and coloured spotted plane and you can always tell when she was about to go out in the plane to go and explore all these places and whether she would you know turn to Pippin and say Pippin it's time to fly and you know you see some sped up footage of them getting ready to get into the plane and she'd go flying off to these different places like even if it was in country you know she'd go and fly to these places you know which was pretty cool you know it wasn't like a big jumbo jet or anything, you know, mm-hmm. calm down people, it wasn't that impressive, it was one of these like light aircrafts, but you know, it was, you know, quite a fantastic thing, even though, even though years later you realise the kind of shoddy shots they had of like the plane flying and you see like this fake puppet Pippin with the stunt person flying it, and then you see the shots of Auntie Mabel going, there we are Pippin, that's where we're going to see the big spiders, and you know, you see you see the planes on the ground it's just being jiggled slightly to show it's flying but as a child you believed that auntie mabel did fly the plane you know that kind of thing but the one thing i've noticed is that it doesn't matter like like yes both mr rogers and auntie mabel talked about different things in their programs but they all they both like you probably will agree with me here mike but they both had that really nice kind of kind of nice warm feeling that you get when you know you see them pop up on the screen and they that they always have that kind of warm welcoming vibe that cozy vibe and and that like resonates into you you know you have that like really warm snuggly cozy feeling you know as if, if it kind of feels like you know you're going to visit a friend or you feel like auntie mabel is your auntie you know she is that family friend, even though she would technically be old enough to be our grandparents or whatever, but even at the time when we were kids, but she felt like she was your auntie, you know, mm-hmm. and and for years, I didn't realise that it was the character's name and not the actual person's name, because for years, I thought she was called Auntie Mabel. <laughs> I thought her actual mm-hmm. name was Mabel, and they called her Auntie Mabel. It was only until I saw another show she was in in the 70s called open all hours but i found out her actual name and that's linda barron and i thought wait you mean your name isn't mabel your name isn't auntie mabel like what this is weird you know even though discovering this as like a teenager or something but it was still that kind of shock but but definitely like you know they had that welcoming vibe and especially with auntie mabel having the northern northern english accent and i think a lot of people i think there's been a survey or something in england where they say that people find the most friendliest of accents is a northern english accent you know so that um you know in a way you know she's not that southern english she's northern english and you can tell that because just through the accent it's more friendly if you understand what i mean mike yes uh, I do understand, and I agree that it's a more welcoming um, tone to make the child understand it's a friendly person you can watch and to look to watch, basically. Two hours later, and we're back. Hello. Sorry about that. That was some minor technical difficulties. We uh, had to rearrange some things. Um, but yeah, uh, 
last we were talking, it was about how Auntie Mabel and Mr. Rogers had that warm, inviting voice to to the show. He would they would talk to you that way. Um, Even though I found Mr. Rogers to sound a little bit creepy in his voice at first, it was like this is totally different to what I'm used to. I think yeah, it, you're used to like one of them. When you hear the other one, you're just like, what the. Fuck? And I think you had a little what the fuck moment. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm, I, I, I mean, I'm going to try to have a friendly debate about this. I mean, we'll get to there, but, um, so, no, I was like looking up like episodes and mind you, Mr. Rogers has been around for, it, la- it started in 68 and it lasted about 2001 and that, that I think it was I don't know how many seasons it did. Um, let me give me a double check here because I he lasted a long time on PBS. And uh, give me a sec here. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, God dang it! Da, 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 da. Episodes. It, there were some specials as well, but I think. See, the first season, which is interesting because the first season of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood had 130 episodes. And then after those um, lot of episodes, they started to reduce them down more every season. Um, Season 2 through 8 had 65 episodes per season. And... um, then season 10 through 23, there was 15. And then after that, they switched between 10, 20, 15, five. And then the, the, there was five episodes at the end. But then there were specials in between. Um, specials include a Christmas special. There was a, a special for Heroes, which was... Uh, a documentary portraits of four real life people who whose work helped make their communities better. Um, then there was the specials about Mr. Rogers talks to parents about blank, where in between the uh, episodes of Mr. Rogers, there'd be an episode special for parents to uh, talk about a certain topic. release from the 21st of September 1993 to the 18th of March 1996. It ran for three series and had 40 episodes. Uh, Come Outside was a bit of a shorter run than Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, but very, right. very well remembered. Uh-huh. Um... The structure of Mr. Rutt. Jews. But it says here, um, it remains one of the most, uh, one of the BBC's most watched children's programs, and due to its popularity, was repeated on CBBS until late 2012. Sorry, you were saying? So, uh, the formatting of Mr. Rogers. Um, in comparison to the other, was um, he would come in singing his theme. He would introduce a, or, or he'll like talk about a random thing. He'll like carry something in and talk about this thing where it's like, uh, a, like he'll have like, like a Walkman, like a cassette tape player. It's like, this is what a cassette tape is, and this is the tape. And he'd, he'll like introduce something about it. And then somebody will, and somebody would come in sometimes. Uh, like Mr. McCreeley, the mailman, would come and deliver something to him, and that would be the, the, something to discuss about a subject matter. Um, the divorce, the divorce episode is interesting uh, because it was Mr. McCreeley who's getting a divorce from his wife, and that's what kind of sparked the whole discussion about divorce. And Mr. Rogers was kind of concerned about that. And then, um, what happens is, like I said before. In make believe in the land of make believe, the 
sort of situation happens in make believe and with the puppets and they'll do like a similar scenario with the topic and uh they'll be played out and then they'll come back to mr rogers after a while and he'll talk about something else like a trip to wherever you know like a factory and like i said or go on an adventure in the neighborhood because in each episode, it's in this fictional kind of neighborhood. You see Mr. Rogers' house when it zooms into it, but but then if he's traveling somewhere in the neighborhood, you kind of see it zoom out, and you kind of see zoom into the location of wherever he's going. Um, so, and the episode structure for Mr. Rogers is a little bit different than Come Outside because um, it's a series episode. So it'll start with, uh, it'll be like, uh, four or five episodes dedicated to a certain topic, and it'll take an arc. It's like a because it premiered like during the week instead of just a weekly thing. It just premiered like all in one week as a, like like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or something, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday if it was five. Um, so, so like, the, sorry, so like um, back in the kind of traditional days of Doctor Who, where they had one plot line. But it was over several episodes. Right. It was a more serialized kind of way of telling something over a period of time. And um, and there was some cases where uh, there was kind of a cool little fact that uh, he would feed his fish. He had fish. And yeah. he, he would like mention, talk about feeding the fish. And then a fan or a watcher would, uh, who was blind uh, sent in a letter saying, why don't you say it more often? Because I'm concerned about the fish. Are you feeding the fish more often? And after that like letter, he continued to just, just announce that he was feeding the fish because there was some yeah. uh, people yeah. who are blind watching it. Yeah, because that was the story that, um, you know... Like you said, he would feed his fish, but like, and he said that he had to fish, but this little girl who was blind didn't know when the fish were going to be fed, and she wanted to make sure the fish were fed, so she wrote a letter, and, and then Mr. Rogers took that into account, mm-hmm. and said, oh, I'm just going to feed me fish, and stuff like that. Yep. Well, the format for Come Outside is kind of similar to Mr. Rogers, but like, you have the famous theme tune which was um, Pip and the Dog in this field and like a cartoon plane with a little Auntie Mabel waving inside on a banner with the lyrics, um, because you sung like your own version of the Mr. Rogers theme. Mm. Like the come outside one was very simple. Look up, look down, look all around. Up in the air or on the ground. Come for a walk come for a ride there's so much to see so come outside and then there'd be this little thing where you see all these kind of stock footage clips <coughs> with auntie mabel describing this thing and then it'd be like what am i i'm a letter and then it would say in letters on the screen i'm a letter or i'm bread and then you see auntie mabel doing you know carrying on with her everyday life and whatever and then she'd notice you look you into the camera and be like hello me dears and then explain what was happening and um and like i said you know she would i think i did this before like you know she'd sing you a little nursery rhyme or something might happen and she tells you a story and uh, and often if there's people that do inter- uh, interact with auntie mabel it's not like other characters it's just people in everyday life you know, but they always refer to her as Auntie Mabel or Auntie, which is kind of weird. It's like everybody knows her, you know, in some way. She's a very popular auntie. And then, right. you know, and often sometimes if she told you a story or if there was like um, a nursery rhyme, it'd be done in the, some sort of animation, so like hand drawn or early CGI or stop motion. And then, well, you know, and then, you know, they want to find out more about it or Auntie Mabel wants to show you. So they go into the plane, Pippin, it's time to fly. And then they go off in the plane and they fly off to somewhere. And then, um, you know, they go 
explore and see things and you know sometimes it'll be like you know maybe just going to the post office and following the postman to how letters are delivered or they go to a factory or um, they might go to a, a field or an orchard where they grow oranges and make black currants and things like that and then um, you know Aunt Mabel would sing you a song about this particular subject you're learning about <coughs> and then afterwards you know they sort of get home and then you know sort of towards the end she'll say now you know all about blank and then maybe something going on with Pippin and that sort of thing um, you know some fun things whether it's Pippin being naughty and getting up to mischief something like that you know or in the case of the spider episode, like the show Mike, where, um, you know, Auntie Mabel's trying to get Pippin to have a bath, and she ends up chasing Pippin around the garden, <laughs> but catches her in the end, and she has a bath, and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, and then after that, it's usually the last shot is Pippin, and she, like, gives a bark out, and then it, it um, transcends or transitions into the credits. Right. Mm. Um, no, but one of the cool things about Mr. Rogers is that he had guests come on from time to time uh, for certain episodes. Like, you had, like, the chel- the famed celloist Yo-Yo Ma come on. Um, even, like, Lou Ferrigno, the original actor for The Incredible Hulk, was on. Um, they, he would have guests come on and they'll do like, even like, um, it's not a guest appearance, but, uh, if you know, like Michael Keane, like Batman, Beetlejuice, that guy, he started, he started his career by working on the show, Mr. Rogers. Oh, wow. That's cool. So, so he got his, so, um, but then, uh, within the, uh, there's sometimes they'll talk about a lot. He'll talk about a lot of serious issues, like mm. uh, one of the one of the big ones, like it was race, yes. and and he was he was he, he was sharing. It's a famous scene because he shares a kiddie pool with a black guy, just mm. you know, just talking and just shooting the breeze with the guy. And just like, it's okay, he's just one of us, you know, and everybody's all the same. It doesn't matter what the color of your skin is or whatever. Mm. It was just just a humble thing in the neighborhood, you know? It's like, you want to come over and just talk and soak your feet in the pool or something? Um, there was another time where they focused on uh, disabilities and uh, a guy in a chair, and they had mm. this... L- this kid from Wisconsin, oddly enough, and he was uh, in, a, in a wheelchair and he showed Mr. Rogers his chair and talked about his disability in full detail to him mm-hmm. and how he moved around and what happened to him. And, and throughout the years, up to Richard Rogers' death, he was very much uh, advocating for him and very much vocal about Mr. Rogers later on. But he's... Uh, that was a good example of, you know, disability re- representative in the world of television. I think when you think about it, like, Mr. Rogers was very re- revolutionary. Because, like, you know, the fact that a blind kid had f- written in to Mr. Rogers asking him about the fish. Probably back then, most people think, that oh, she's disabled. What does she know? But actually, Mr. Rogers thought, actually, this child does need to know when the fish are being fed because everybody else, they can see when the fish are being fed, but she wouldn't be able to. So he took that into account and he did it. And he spoke to the the young lad from Wisconsin who had a disability. And also, I, I remember seeing a video on Facebook talking about the, the, the race thing with the paddling pool the fact that there was this I think it was some sort of controversy how like um, there was like a, a local swimming pool outdoor swimming pool where um, these people weren't letting be certain people in because they were black and it's like oh we can't have black people right. and stuff and being all 
you know, very silly and selfish about it, you know. But Mr. Rogers did this very, and the way he he did it in such a simple way, it was so revolutionary, and yet done in a simple way where it was like, you know, it's a lovely hot sunny day and what a lovely day to paddle in the pool. And his friend comes over and says, oh, you know, hello, why don't you come join me, you know? You must be very hot. Why don't you come soak your feet and enjoy the cool water? And he just, he did it like that, you know, in just a, a very simple way. Because, I mean, <clears throat> you know, some people think that, like, the children's media, like shows or whatever, you have to do it simple. But sometimes if you do it too simple, it undermines the kids, you know, and it's just basically makes it look lazy and it doesn't pull off as well. But it's getting that balance. And I think Mr. Roger, Mr. Rogers, in those situations, he did it in a simple way, but he got it right, you know? So. Yeah, he was, uh, Mr. Rogers was very simplistic, but yet <laughs> thorough with his teachings and wise words to mm. kids and way to explain things to simplify things so they can understand and um there was um talking about emotions at one point or talking about it's okay to feel sad it's okay to because I, I was actually looking through the episode list and i actually found an episode you know it was i don't remember what season it was but it was the uh a clip of that episode was actually used on the TV for a movie, that little film from 95 being Casper. And Casper's watching the TV, and he's like, it's okay to be sad sometimes. Uh, you can be emotional at times as much as you want. And he's just like, if, for certain characters, it'll reflect on their self-character because of what Mr. Rogers said in general. Yeah. And also with Auntie Megan, like, she... You know, she did things in a simple way, but it wasn't like, you know, like with Mr. Rogers and both Auntie, both Auntie Mabel, Mabel and Mr. Rogers, sorry. Like, they did things in a simple way, but it wasn't like undermining the kids. Right. Like, you know, like when, say, for instance, they went to a factory to go and see, like, you know, how crisps are made, potato chips, or like how juices are made and things like that you know they show you step by step in the factory mm -hmm. and she would just simply say at this stage this is what they do and you see it's done and then they move on and say and at this stage they they put the crisps or juice into the cartons and they show you and stuff like that you know and you know What's quite nice about Come Outside is that you do have the comical moments with Pip and the dog, you know, being mischievous and things like that. But that's what adds the fun in there to show that, you know, learning can be fun. You know, I'm sure mm -hmm. Mr. just has comical moments as well. Because, you know, if you can add humour into that and make learning fun, then it's going to sink in better that way. And also the, the whole thing about, you know, learning through play is a very important thing for child development. Yeah. Uh, what uh, he'll, Mr. Rogers will do a lot of interacting with the audience, you know, kind of like asking about what he has in his hand or what, you know, he'll set up something to play around and ask like hypothetical questions to the audience. Like, well, which, how would you do this? And how would you do this? And, oh, this is how I would do it. And just, like, kind of play along. And, and they always act. He was like, use your imagination, like, as much as possible when when it comes to being playful. And, and like, problem solving by asking them how would they do it. Mm-hmm. It was very hands-on when it comes to that. That's what it was. I'm trying to, because mm. for me, the research I have, that I only did on Mr. Rogers was watching a few episodes of a set of episodes. Um, like I said, it was the divorce episode because for me, uh, growing up, my parents were split, separated, and eventually got a divorced. And 
as a kid, I don't think I've seen this episode, but watching it as an adult now, like going back to watching Mr. Rogers as an adult, you can kind of understand a little bit more and how they explain things uh, with these serious moments. And for me, I, I understood a lot of it. It made sense the way they were talking about it and they, how they situated certain um, elements of it. Like, like I said, Mr. McFree- in the episodes, Mr. McFreely was getting divorced and they kind of did like a flashback to his wedding, kind of showing off what they resolved it. And of course, they'll, he'll stop this kind of like it's a storyline. He'll stop the storyline and he'll go visit somewhere. So one of the examples is going to a factory to show how they make pretzels. And it was just, he's like, he was so excited to go to the pretzel places, just like talk to them. It's like, how do you make pretzels? And they'll, they'll like set it up for him to actually make the pretzels and kind of get into the motion of how to make stuff with his hands. And so he can learn how to make it on his own. And then he'll like take it, he'll take like his product home, you know, and talk about it more for further. Because um, I like how with like when the postman comes along it's like he's dropping off the letters and he finds um a piece of paper which turns out to be music notes and um, mr rogers is able to play it on the piano and it turns out it's a piece of music that reminds the postman of some music that was played at yep. his wedding yep yeah small things like that would trigger yeah. something like that and yeah mr mcfreely would do that often he'll like have a certain something to like not like quiz but like ask mr rogers about you know i know like he'll offer like a trip too and he'll he'll come on some trips to like a factory or somewhere you know or not, not it's not all factories they're like they'll go like places like like i said they'll go to a store they'll go to this place and that place it's like it's a little bit less tension of the topic being said in the episode it's like, like it's a little fun trip you know it's like you learn something along the way it's not focused on the subject matter all the time. Mm. And that at the end of the all the episodes that once you see the last episode of the series of those episodes, they'll he'll give you like the strongest moral message about the said topic and what you learn from it. You know? Because with divorce, some things you some things you can't be fixed. You gotta learn that things can't be fixed and you just have to move on, you know? It's probably not the right message that I remember, but if you look back and just whatever the episodes are, but I mean, watching Mr. Rogers as adult, it's still, it's entertainment for your kids and an adults because like I said, Mr. Rogers did a special episode for parents because they talk to kids about these topics more outside of just nature products what's going on outside of your house it's just like within the neighborhood let's like explore the neighborhood you know and talking about issues in life even like when um kind of when the assassination or a death of somebody happened he'll talk about the death of somebody and they'll talk about gun safety and all that stuff just to make sure kids understand what's going on episode like it seems that you know you went through that experience of having your parents split right when you were younger but then like the divorce was finalized when you were older right did you find like watching the subject on divorce as an adult did you find that kind of reassuring for all the things you may have had when you were younger in a way, yes, because as a kid, I was kind of like, I knew there was some issues going on with my parents, and I knew there was stuff going on with them, and I just like, oh, they're separating. Oh, I have to live with my mom and dad. Oh, mom, oh, dad, oh, mom, dad. And then eventually, like you said, the divorce wasn't finalized until I was much older, you know? Watching Mr. Rogers and f- reflecting on it, it made me understand and help my psyche better understanding, like, it wasn't my fault. It's there. It, it was just sometimes things don't work out as they seem, you know? So, 
it, it's reassuring to to like have a, a gentle voice who knows a lot about these subject matters telling you it's like mr rogers is like that therapist you go to every week he'll talk he'll talk to you about certain issues every week and he's reassuring he tells you it's going to be okay in the end no matter what happens that's what mr rogers does he's very comforting and he's a wise mouth with great words of wisdom and shows um how things are done yeah and then and then like i said occasionally there'll be like a break from it and you get on a tangent of like oh let's explore something else outside of the neighborhood you know or go to atlanta make-believe and have these fun characters talk about these serious um issues because sometimes Having Mr. Rogers said it, you need to have a visual representation of what's going on. You need to see how it works out in the characters in Make Believe so they so it's concrete evidence for kids. Kids are sometimes visual and they need to see it play out rather than hear it, you know. Yeah. And sometimes in, in some cases, depending on who's watching, uh they're they're gonna hear the situation play out because they may be blind. You know, yeah, because also, like, with um, come outside when they did go explore things and whatever, you know, they had some really good visual shots to show you how it's happening. Like I said, you know, Auntie Mabel will say at this stage, this happens, whatever, and then they show you and things like that. But also, like, um, there was lots of different places that they went, not just factories and things like that, but they um because of like talking about animals they um they had like um a moment where you know they go and see frogs and snails and things like that like they'd have episodes on those and also they had uh, an episode where they had a hedgehog that they named spiky a wild hedgehog and they had to take it to uh, St. Tiggy Wiggles um, Animal Hospital um, <clears throat> and that sort of thing um, you know and also it says here that they actually had spiders like tarantulas and stuff from a private collection you know and they actually go to this guy's house to to go see the spiders and things like that you know and of course any sort of additional shots well, just archive shots that they got from the the BBC's Natural History Film Library in Bristol and things like that. So, you know, but a fun fact about Pippin, good old Pippin, that we were talking about, uh, and I didn't know this until um, uh, Mike told me from looking this up, that um, Pippin uh, was a mixed breed dog, half Tibetan terrier, and half bearded collie, roughly third generation descended from the famous American acting dog Benji. Uh, so yeah, so like the original Pippin was quite old to start with in the first series, so they had the original Pippin for the first series, and then <clears throat> you know, so then after a while, um. And then they had her grandson, Mr. Higgins, come in to, like, perform any sort of physically demanding action. So, like, you know, the original Pippin would sort of have, like, um, you know, he'd do the kind of slow, kind of less complex, or slow but complex moves and stuff while her grandson did all the running about and stuff. And then Pippin retired at the end of Series 1, and then Mr. Higgins took over as the role of Pippin for the for the entirety of series two and three and um, you know unfortunately both the Pippin dogs are no longer with us with the original Pippin dying in the late 90s and the one that everybody said RIP on Facebook and that sort of thing that was Mr Higgins who had died in 2008 so Pippin 
They are gone but not forgotten. So yeah. Yeah, and um I think with animals, especially on Mr. Rogers, if I, I, I've, like I said, it's been a while since I've seen Mr. Rogers. I'm going from memory and I'm going from looking at descriptions of episodes um, that I've seen. Um, I think one of the examples I've seen in descriptions, and I don't remember the episode or the season, but I remember looking at there's one point where Mr. McFreely comes in with two African lion cubs to Mr. Rogers in his house. And they talked about lions. They talked. They showed them. They were just playing with them. They're just like the two little cubs just running around, you know. And um, so they'll, they'll. I guess he'll have like animal animals once in a while within their uh, in the neighborhood just to talk about or something. Um, so yeah, it's a variety of things they'll talk about and show as like a kind of like a field trip to the neighborhood in a way. And Mister McFreely will have like. I guess you could call it a MacGuffin in a way in this world because they'll have he'll have something that transitions to the whole episode in general and talk about get things going for the whole discussions and all that stuff. So, um, um, I've just looked up um, the one thing that I said beforehand was that not only did Auntie Mabel have a dog, but she had a plane. And for any pl- uh, airplane enthusiasts out there who want to know. Um, she had a, a small aeroplane, which was a Slingsby T67 fly, Firefly, which was multi, uh, with multicolored polka dots. So, once again, for all you aeroplane enthusiasts, it was a Slingsby T67, so Tango 67 Firefly. Um, actually, one of the cool things about Mr. Rogers is that not only... Well, okay, I, when mentioning guests, I forgot to mention that there was one episode where Big Bird from Sesame Street visited the land of make-believe in oh. Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Um, but he also did return. He, Mr. Rogers appeared... Shit, I, I forgot what it was. Give me... A second, I swear to God, because I would like to talk about that. Um, um, by the way, the call froze a bit, so. Has it? Yeah. You said some. Well, you said something, then it froze, and then you came back. Oh, sorry. I'll repeat it. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, depending on how or what I said last. Um, <sighs> So the cool thing was, I'll repeat everything I said. The cool thing was that Mr. Rogers had, uh, he was like the original crossover king. He would cross over on a bunch of other shows. Um, one of them was, first off, Big Bird appeared in Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood in a make in the land of make-believe for an episode. I don't remember what the reason one was. It was pretty cool seeing him, you know, interacting with the other characters. But then... Mr. Rogers returned the favor by going on Sesame Street to talk to Big Bird. Um, uh, let's see. He explained to Big Bird that even if one loses a running race, such as the one Big Bird had to run against his friend Snuffy, no hard feelings threatened to break the two of them apart. Mm-mm. Because it was like... Ah, oh, you beat me. Ah, oh, we can't be friends no more. Ah, oh, I, I hate losing kind of thing. It's like, no, you guys have to be friends still, despite that. Um, he would also he would also appear on an episode of the cartoon series Arthur. He would voice a role in that, playing himself in that, visiting Arthur. And he had a, a talk with Arthur, on, like on a swing set or something. I don't remember what the... What the thing was in the episode but yeah i remember seeing that as one of the guest stars um so he was a very important figure on pbs in general he was a big advocate for uh pbs because it was like public broadcasting television and he wanted to keep that going yeah. for kids well, or whatever saved yeah saved it you know um, yeah just been looking in the characters and i said that there was only two characters i tell a lie um they had ed Feverstone, so edith or ed Feverstone, auntie mabel's sister who 
who is often referred to but never seen on screen. However, her voice was heard in an episode of Woolly Jumper. Interesting. And then Great Aunt Edna, uh, Auntie Mabel's great aunt, who is also never seen on screen but is referred to by Auntie Mabel in the episode Toothpaste. So, uh, with characters in Mr. Rogers, there are way too many to mention because um, the neighborhood that Mr. Rogers' neighborhood is in, there's a lot of characters that are they're not like real people. They're actually character characters within the neighborhood. And they'll sometimes, and they'll sometimes cross over into the land of make believe as well. So there's a parallel between the real neighborhood of Mr. Rogers and the land of make believe in telling these kind of serious issues or serious topic, uh, stories in general, like Mr. I keep mentioning Mr. McCreeley because he's the mailman. He's like one of the important characters to Mr. Rogers. He's like his best friend and he'll deliver whatever. Like he's the postman after all. Um, so he'll like speed delivery for you. I, he'll just deliver something, you know, like I, I remember one time it was like, he had a box and it was like, what's in the package? It's crayons, you know, and they went to a crayon factory and showed how they make crayons. It was just like, come on, I have like this invitation, let's go. Um, the Land of Make Believe has a ton of characters. There's King Friday and Prince Tuesday. I can't remember the king, the Queen's name, but there was like other animals. There's like uh, Owl X, and there's like one of the most popular ones is Daniel Tiger, because after Mr. Rogers' uh, neighborhood ended and when he died, they eventually made a spinoff. A anime spinoff with Daniel Tiger and his family called Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. Oh wow, that's cool. So they kind of continue that legacy with Daniel Tiger and his. Uh, and I never seen that. I never seen the show. I I will say to be honest, I know what I know a teacher of mine in college here. She has a kid and a baby, and she wa- and they watch Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. And by the way she's saying about it, it doesn't seem too positive because it's getting annoying to her. So I don't know if it's a good or bad thing, if it was, like, repetitive or it's just, like, oh, you got to watch something else, kid. You can't watch this all the time or something. I don't know. Um, I might have to, like, check out an episode and see what that's all about. Um, <coughs> but, like, when you said, like, speedy delivery, for some reason, I just had in my head... Like some sort of version of that dude from Frozen, him just being like, "Hoo hoo, neighborhood blowout." <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, so, there's something on here about awards for come outside. So shall we compare awards? So, uh, oh, the episode entitled "Bricks" won the Royal Television Society Educational Television Award. Try saying that three times fast. Uh, 1997 in the preschool and infants category. Now, other mentions of awards. Let me guess. Mr. Rogers got so many they were coming out of his ears. Uh, uh I honestly, I'm looking, and I do not see. Let me it's actually. Type in the word. Oop, oop, oop. Oh, nothing. Uh, oh, here it is. What is this? The show won a Sylvania Award for Best Children's Show. I have no idea what that means. That is a award given by the television manufacturer Sylvania Electronic Products for various categories for television performance, broadcasting scripts, music, and other aspects. Um, okay, that's weird. See, I guess it wasn't so much because, mind you, it's PBS and it's they're not so much on awards so much. I don't think. I've never heard about like a show on that public broadcasting station getting like a Emmy for best 
daytime drama or best daytime children's show. I don't think I've never ever considered that. Um, I mean, I'm amazed that like Come Outside wasn't like nominated for a BAFTA or any, anything like that. You know, <coughs> or even a children's BAFTA. Um, home video, like I said before, um, the BBC issued a collection of VHS tapes in the early 2000s. Excuse me. Later released on DVD. The complete series is now available in a DVD box set. These releases are not intended for home use, but instead for use in schools and other educational purposes. So, like, you very rarely saw, like, them, like, on the shelf where the VHSs were, like, to take home. Like, they were all very... Well, you know, they were very much, like, for school purposes because, like I said, you know, that's one of the places that, you know, you used to watch Come Outside, which was in school. Oh, wow. I didn't even mention this. I, I just looked this up because I typed in uh, home releases for DVD. But I guess this was kind of, this is tie into reruns. Okay, this, this ties into reruns um, because... With Mr. Rogers of rebroadcasting after his death, some stations kind of will have a day where they'll show an episode or or two of Mr. Rogers. And I'm trying to see here. What do we got here? Uh, and Mr. Rogers started off in black and white, by the way, and eventually went into color when color became a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, just, just a heads up. Um, so I'm looking at the reruns here. And the only... One that they have not uh, re-aired was um, Conflict, which was the series slash story arc cover the topics of war, bombs, and arms race, which was a response to the invasion of Grandada and the 1983 Beirut barracks bombings. Um the last time it was aired, it was back in 1996. So Mr. Rogers did cover talking about war, bombs, and arms race to kids. I've not seen it myself, but that's very serious issues when it comes to that. Um, okay. Only a few episodes of the series have been released on, to DVD. Um, although some earlier compilations based release were issued uh, on VHS um, during the mid-80s. But I will, but I will mention if you guys are streaming, Amazon Prime, Amazon Video has volumes of select episodes. Not all the episodes, but they'll have they have like six volumes of set episodes. You can watch and go back and watch Mister Rogers. I think the I think it it's kind of like chronological chronological order. So the first volume is like the first like set of black and white episodes, and then leads up to the uh, most current stuff. Um, it's true. That's where we found our research. So, and of course, um, Twitch is a massive uh, platform for streaming, and they've been doing marathons of Mister Rogers, along with um, Bob Ross's *The Joy in Painting*, as well as Julia Child's *The French Chef*. Because because of Twitch marathons, they've become more cult followings now of the shows. Anyway, by the way, a bit of advice for people. Don't try and cook a, a whole chicken for eight minutes. We're too sure about that. I was joking about that. Um, <laughs> okay, we, should probably, we should probably give them some context to that. <laughs> like, Mike earlier on was playing around and, like, pretending to be Julia child. And um, <laughs> he was pretending to be an show. You had to cook this chicken. And um, what was it? to cook it for, for like three minutes and then uh, do something to the chicken and then stick it back in for another five minutes <laughs> for another five minutes and I said you can't serve chicken like that you can't just cook it for eight minutes it'd be raw absolutely raw you'd be poisoning people and he just collapsed laughing so so did uh, I so I want to make a comparison in the scope of 
how big things are and how small things are. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood is a neighborhood. You get the scope of the neighborhood as you, like, you see the house he goes into, or the, the television house, as they call it, and then you zoom out and you see the neighborhood and they'll, like, zoom into whatever location. However, come outside, however, it is more of a grander scale because it's not in a tight little city. It's, like, or neighborhood. It is... She's living out in the middle of, like, nowhere, basically, and she has that plane to travel to destination to destination, and sometimes... She, went, be... she went to Spain. It was... it, and But actually, watching it now as an adult, like, you can tell that the actor that they've put in there for, to, like, get the shots of her back to make it look like it's Auntie Mabel, but it isn't Auntie Mabel. And then that green screen, my God. Mm. <laughs> How do we not notice this as children? But it makes sense for it to be the shoddy screen screen, green screen and the shoddy like actor standing in because you can't just fly to spin them back. And, and this is where I'm going to have to be all right, I, I'm done with everything. I'm just gonna. I've watched come outside with her, and I've been, I've been, my mind, and I've been like really cynical and really like sarcastic with it, like a lot of comments against it, and like something she'll show me. Riff, 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 riff. I, I, I just rip it apart because I'm just like, what is going on? Because some things are really like, I know it's a kid show, and I know it's just something for kids to watch. She doesn't have to fly everywhere. She does not have to fly everywhere. Um, she and then to. she likes to. But then, but then she doesn't. I was gonna say, I, th- I think she does drive sometimes. I believe she, she drives a plane. Because I remember there was like one episode. Uh, no, this is ridiculous. Because there was this. It was the um. Oh God! Was it the the mail episode or the garbage episode because there was like one point oh no 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 no. was it oh i'm confusing two episodes right now because one of them was pippin had to he he ran off or she uh, he she whatever the dog would run off to get this piece of garbage or a letter and he would have to like walk it all the way to the dump and Auntie Mabel's like, where's my dog? And she starts looking for the dumb dog. And it's just like... <laughs> it's like... But what? Sad, but what and, forever, and then she goes back to find Pippin and they're reunited. And I teared up at that. I never did as a child. But as an adult... It's I just like... It's like... It's like... It, it, some situations could be resolved with a very quick fix, and it turns out to be an elaborate, like, massive problem. Like, if you didn't drop this little piece of garbage, the dog wouldn't pick it up and walk all the way to the dump as you were... I think Pip and Ran. Or something like that. And then, oh, no, this is better. The, okay, I'm thinking of the mail episode as well, because there was an episode where they talked about, like, the mail system is sending a letter. So... At the beginning, uh, they visited, I think they traveled somewhere and they visited something or a friend's house or they're traveling I something. Was, I think it was her sister they went or, to visit or, or something like Yeah, I think it was the sister. Something. So they're, pa- they're packing stuff to go and she puts her bag in the plane, but the dog forgets his, their own luggage. So... The dog left the luggage at the place, and they start flying back home. And they're like, she's unloading, and she's like, "Oh dear, you forgot your luggage back at the place." Um, instead of just flying back to get it, she hops on like, she takes rides in like trolleys and like trains, following the mail like late. Right, she wrote her letter first, and she wrote it to the place, warning it about the package, and she follows it all the way back to the house that they left originally and so to make sure the letter got through 
but never retrieve the luggage in the first place. And the episode just ends. It's like, wait, what was the process of doing it in the first place? Like, yeah, sure. Showing the mail process in the UK, that's fine. But, like, why follow it all the way, not pick it up in the first place? I, I, sometimes these videos are so ridiculous. Just, just, just to show kids, hey, this is what we're going to talk about in this episode. And then there was me sitting there like, my childhood, you're ripping my childhood to me. I, it's like, okay. <laughs> I think we managed to redeem it with the spider episode when you did find the whole um, chase with Pippin in the garden. It's funny. So it, it has its harm when it does. But sometimes with certain episodes, it does get like ridiculous. I will, I understand the, I understand the audience. I understand what they're appealing to. But as an adult mind, I'm thinking they should have done this differently in certain ways, just to make sure they done it correctly. I've, if I was directing the episode, I'd be like, okay, instead of doing this, we'll do it this way. And you know, my critical mind kicks in. But yeah, she's anti Mabel is very like. She's delightful. She is. And the dog is always delightful as well. I you Brits have delightful characters and she's like the accent Thank does you. keep me warm. The dog is very cute. I admit that. You know, and I learned stuff as they were talking about, you know, certain the uh, topic of the week, you know. So I will I I am sorry. Like I didn't want to like I I just I couldn't like take my charge to peace. <laughs> I could not I just couldn't take it for most episodes, but otherwise, <laughs> I can understand why we did this episode in the first place. Because, yeah, they are very much similar with the way the shows work, talking to kids about certain topics, and showing how things are. Yeah. But I, I can just imagine sometimes, like, if you've got got to like give your dogs a bath they run off and you'd be chasing after them and it's not just one dog you've got three dogs to contend with oh <laughs> oh oh it's like oh hey mr spider what are you doing here because the, the, the a spider comes out of nowhere and that's where the episode all starts because the dog didn't didn't want to take a bath because there was a spider in the tub or something right yeah so it's like yeah. And then Auntie it's, maybe takes Pippin to see her friend who has the big spiders. It's like, okay, that's a bit random. It's like, yeah, you teach your dog about these spiders, okay. Spiders, spiders, big and small. I like spiders <laughs> best of all. Did, that was one of the that was the song that was in there. And she sings about all these big spiders and small spiders and stuff like that. It shows you how a spider spins its web and stuff, and yeah, it's that's the thing that's interesting about our cultures and our television shows. It's like, like I said before, the principles are the same. The point is, these kids' shows are teaching. It's edutainment, basically. They're teaching kids while entertaining. (laughs) Sorry, (laughs) (laughs) edutainment. Yeah, it's education and entertainment. Edu- oh, oh I, I, I thought maybe you were trying to say entertainment and you just no, fluffed no, I, it. <laughs> edge, edge, I, I think there's a better term, I think, but I think, I can't remember what it was, but it's edu- edutainment, that's what it was. Edutainment, that's what it was. Um, I like yours, edutainment. <laughs> I like yours now. <laughs> um... So yeah, if you want to like revisit these shows, like I said, you can clearly go on Prime Video, and if you have Amazon Prime, you can actually check out the collections of Mister Rogers. Um, check check your local listings on PBS as well, and see if they're rerunning episodes on your local channel. If not, uh, they are on YouTube as well. They are indeed, and. Um... One thing I kind of find interesting is that, like, Linda Barron, who played Aunt Mabel, is still alive. 
Uh-huh. Mr. Roger isn't. Be interesting to see like what'd be like if like Auntie Mabel and Mr. Roger meet in heaven one day. Uh who knows? Um Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Rogers is that wholesome uh guy. You know, he's very wholesome with his nature and he's part of like I, I always see like him being associated with the wholesome um, crowd. There was like, I think it's like, I'm trying to think, there was three or four people that are tied with Mr. Rogers. There's Mr. Rogers, Bob Ross, Steve Irwin, and I forgot what the, f- there's a fourth one. I can't remember. Jim Henson, maybe? Yes, Jim Henson. That's what it was. Yep. So, I mean, he he was like the one of the, the music makers out there to just to say and hey. i think yeah and i think i saw something on sorry mike on facebook i think it was one of these kind of hand drawn things where it had mr rogers in and it was like just him working his charm you know that kind of thing and and actually fun fact about mr rogers that um apparently all his um cardigans were knitted by his mum yes yes um. Yeah, the opening to each episode is they're, they're, they're different because he'll, depending on what it is, he'll dress in something different and like kind of like how I did in the cold open. I kind of took something off just to be like who I am. Mm. So he'll take he'll take something off and he'll put something back on just to be like at home um, as he sings a song. And he, and of course he'll bring like whatever with them, you know. Like a bag or item, you know, as he walks in. So I should have said that at the beginning, but now it's at the end. So uh, ha, reverse order. So, and I'm I'm sure Mr. Roger is giving Pippin lots of walks and things like that. You know? So, to Pippin and Mr. Roger, Mr. Rogers, you are gone but not forgotten. Indeed. And very, and very much loved. Yeah. God bless. Rest in peace. Um, uh, so we want to hear from you guys in particular. Have you seen either shows? Have you seen Mr. Rogers? Have you seen Come Outside? If so, leave a comment below letting us know what your favorite moments and memories of each show are. And tell me all... Uh, damn Skype call froze again but also we'd be interested to know are you, whose team are you on are you team Mr. Rogers or are you team Auntie Mabel uh, if you want to answer that question just go to the card in the left hand corner so you can answer that. let's see let's see how many people we've got for each team so team Auntie Mabel or team Mr. Rogers there's the card right now Okay. Because I didn't hear what you said because the, the call froze again, but there we are. Until next time. God bless. Stay dramatic. Adios, amigos. <laughs>